Welcome to the first in a three-part series on how to write a show in Director. Uh, this is going to be the basics, uh, just a very simple show. And the first thing you're going to want to decide on is what you are controlling and what controller to use. Uh, if you're just doing some sort of puzzle, like a simple push, push buttons puzzle, generally one of these room controllers is going to be a little bit of overkill. Uh, you you want, want to look into something more like an escape keeper if you're doing something simple, um, or a flex. A flex is, is also probably closer to what you would need if you're just doing a simple puzzle. Technically, these are room controllers here. Uh, they're meant to control like m multiple aspects of a room, but don't get me wrong, I have definitely used these uh, for just single puzzles because they just they did what I needed to more than something else did. So uh, there's also you know uh, Peekaboo MP3s which can be controlled with Director. Um, you've got the uh, Peekaboo uh, DMX here, Pico DMX uh, that allows you to control DMX uh, through Director as well. And so, but for today's example, we're going to be going using a FlexMax. And we're going to do eight outputs because there's no, let's, you know, right in the middle, it would be nice there. And we're going to name this test, which is already exists, but it doesn't matter. So when this opens up here, this is going to be your interface. It's going to start on input one and your settings will not be visible. Uh, one of the things I like to do is fly this out immediately. And then I can kind of mess with my show settings, uh, which we'll do in a second. Uh, and I will almost always go to ambient first. And I will either I will either pull this out, or I can right click and do end scene here, or uh, if I have ambient audio that I already know I'm going to grab, I just go here, do that, and it's going to say, "Do you want me to make the thing the same length?" I say yes, and now as you can see, it makes the whole length of the scene there like that. So. And as you can see, I have added ambient audio, which lets me um, just have something playing. Ambient is what, what basically what plays when the controller starts up. When it boots up, this is the scene that will play, and it is already preset to loop on itself. And you'll see this here, after scene, go to this scene. You can also just choose ambient zero, but it's already set for this scene. So the ambience will always loop on themselves. The other thing is when you start a new scene, sometimes all of these will be checked here. Um, I generally uncheck these to start with, just so there's no confusion down the line. These are what we're going to be using for this simple show, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, the next thing I like to do is figure out what my outputs are going to be. Uh, what is happening here when certain things happen? So, and then I like to name them. So let's say I have a couple of maglocks in my room. So that'll be a maglock, maglock there. And let's say, let's say I have three maglocks, mag02, and then this will be mag03, like that. And now let's say these are LEDs that show uh, something happening. Because when you have a show, when you have a room that you're making, it's generally good to have feedback. So you want audio and something visual, a light coming on or something like that. So that, that generally helps players know something has occurred uh, that is proper like that. So let's, uh, let's see, LED02, and now let's have, these would be going with the maglocks. So, you know, uh, three maglocks, uh, three LEDs. And these here would be other miscellaneous uh, things. I do not know what they would be. Um, actually, you know, actually, you know, hold on. I know what these would be. This would be lighting. Because um, these can also just be used to power things that don't actually do anything, right? So let's say this is underglow lighting that when a box opens, uh, there's lights inside that uh, that people can see just to give an accent to something because that also is really nice when something opens you can accent the inside of a box or the underside of a trap door or something like that. So let's just say this is our show right now. So generally when you wire up your mag locks and your stuff to your controller, uh, you would have to like have this on in every scene, right? This blue line means on. Uh, however, uh, what I prefer to do is to go over here to show settings and use normally closed output right here. So I can sit, tell the maglock to tell these three maglocks to be on. So these are on right now. And if I want my lighting to be on as well, 
I could do that, and now that lighting will just stay on. But uh, for this scenario, let's only do seven, uh, eight is on, and seven is off, and I'll talk about why in a little bit. Uh, the rest of this probably don't need to mess with. You've got your master volume and all that stuff, and uh, so all this stuff is generally all you really need for that. Now, uh, obviously, you have to figure out what your inputs are going to be. Let's just say all of our inputs are buttons or read switches or something very, very simple. You know, let's uh, let's just say, for the sake of argument, it's simple inputs, nothing nothing complicated, no no um, motion sensors, no no um, proximity sensors, just simple buttons and read switches. Okay. So now, the best way to think about how to create a show with this is to think of this as a show, right? So you've got uh, your ambient, your input here. Now, I also like to label my scenes, right? Uh, this one is almost always titled waiting because it's waiting for an input of some sorts, okay? So let's say we come here and I'm going to title this um, something happens like that. Uh, let's say, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot. Sorry, too many things happened. Okay, so let's say uh, door open, all right? So that's your first door opening like that. And that'll play our first door open. And now this will be our second door. This will be our third door, like that. Uh, and then we'll just uh, we'll just leave this like this for right now. If we need to add some more, we will. So uh, the other thing you can also do is sometimes what'll happen is, uh, and this will be something we go over in a later show, where you can't go back to this waiting uh, thing. Uh, you'll actually end up needing another waiting scene. And so what I'll do is I'll add below, and I can add another scene in here. But we don't need to do that for this right now. This is this is the basics. We'll go over that in, in the intermediate video next. All right, so let's talk about how to trigger those scenes. How do we get to the, the on, I mean, in my opinion, this should be called scene one, not input one. But just can just think that the word input says scene. All right, and again, you're going to think about each one of these as a scene. This is scene one, this is scene two, and this is what happens in that scene. It's like, it's kind of like writing a play. So interruptible by uh, means that whenever, if you have something wired to trigger one, input one on your controller, and it goes off, it will force the, uh, the controller to go to input one like that. So that's that's how that happens. And that's, and that's the easiest thing you can do right there, okay? So if we wired up a maglock to this, let's say, or excuse me, we wired up, uh, we wired up a trigger, a button to this. So we got input one, and there's nothing here, but we want a sound effect to play. So let's have an, a sound effect play, yes, and we'll also have the LED turn on like this. So we'll have this LED turn on, so they know something happened. Now this LED will not stay on. Uh, but it will come on. Now, there is a way to get these to kind of stay on and stuff like that, but we'll go over that later. So this is just LED comes on and, and something occurs, okay? And uh, and then also your mag lock uh, will also open. So remember what I said earlier about having these always on, right? So this will, this is, th these are on right now. So scene one, maglock one and uh and i can take my mouse and i can try to drag this through here like this but personally i prefer to click which highlights the whole row and do turn on that's much faster and more precise for me so that happens uh you'll hear a sound effect play which you probably you may or may not be able to hear uh actually right now but that's not important uh so that sound effect plays uh this led comes on and the maglock lets loose. And then over here at scene settings, after scene go to, we're gonna go back to waiting. You can leave it on next scene because it means it's gonna jump because this is the only scene, but I, I prefer to force it to go to here like that. So boom, after that, and now we're back to waiting, which means we're just waiting for the next scene to trigger. And so because we only are technically using three scenes here, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna just have these three interruptible scenes like that in waiting. Uh, now the one danger with this in designing a room is if they can access these things out of order, uh, they might trigger some stuff they're not supposed to yet. So, 
Uh, again, we'll talk about that in, a, in the next video, but right now we're just assuming that, you know, this is all stuff that can be triggered whenever uh, out of order and uh, all that stuff. So now we go to input two. This will basically be the exact same thing you just saw right there. Sound effect, maglock two turns on, LED two turns on like that, and uh, then back to waiting. Again, it's again. Just think about it like scenes. Every every scene is different, and this will go back, and your audio will either start over, so your audio can start over, or you can have this set for ambient resume, which means it'll start the music or audio back where it stopped from. If that's important, you don't have to worry about that right now. It's just an option that you have if you need it to do that. So uh, now we're going to go to three, and three we're going to do something just a smidge different just for funsies. Uh, let's see, I'll do that. Yes, maglock on, LED on. Now if you recall over here, I had had uh, seven, the LED lighting of seven not be on uh, at all. So right now there's nothing going on here, um, but this one has been on the whole time, right? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have this light now turn off. So this light turns off um, when something happens. So now they know that the third thing has happened, this light shuts off. And uh, let's let's actually add a, a fourth scene here. Uh, let's do success. This is your success scene. This is when things, you've, you've so correctly solved the thing. All right, so we're gonna add that in like that. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna have this ambient go from here to success like this now this is of course assuming that they can only do this uh do everything linearly so like scene one can has to be done first scene two has to be done second or whatever but this one has to be last so we're just assuming that it's like this happens then this happens then this happens so now because of that that goes to success right there this would play a success sound effect of some sorts, like that. There we go. And so now uh, we could also then, we could actually have the light, um, we could actually have everything turn off now if we wanted to, um, because this light turned off. Actually, let's have this light turn on, like this as well. So that light now turns on, this one turns off, and, uh, then when you go to success like this, oh, here's a little, sh little fun shortcut thing you can do, by the way, uh, is you can uh, highlight multiple rows and then copy, control C, and then when you go here, you can highlight those same rows and it'll just add all that stuff. Now it does it to the exact same length that was in another thing here. Uh, so now that has elongated this, but you can go back up to scene and make scene length equal to sound. So anyway, so you'll notice now that the maglock has re-energized, but these have stayed on or off, depending on what you needed it to do right there. So now that stays on, plays a different sound effect, ta-da, walkout music, scene transition, whatever. Now, um, you could have another scene after this, if we wanted to, that is your uh, reset scene, like this. And what would happen is, after this scene, this would come here. We would do uh, something very similar to what we had done a second ago, like this. And now this scene, you set for reset. Now this scene just loops on itself. This one is just sitting here doing nothing, right? Every is just sitting in an, in, a, uh, in an ambient state with no audio. And then this here, this LED and lighting, these are all on or off, depending on what you need to have happen here. So this is just looping on itself with these lights on or off, waiting for the waiting for it to go back to waiting here like this. And you can, uh, let's just for fun, let's say you have a reset button. Let's say that you have a reset button outside of your room, right? And that is this, let's say interruptible by six. So six is your reset, right? So now our next scene, uh, let's actually change this. Reset, wait. So now that's waiting to reset. This is reset, 
there we go, like that. So now reset wait means it's waiting to be reset. So loop, 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 loop. There we go here. And I'm just gonna make this a three second thing like that. Go to ambient. So now, so let's go through the show. This is this is your quick, quick, quick and dirty basic show. Here's your ambient scene. It's looping. There's audio playing. People are trying to figure out puzzles, right? So now <clears throat> your interruptibles are waiting as well. So somebody, uh, let's say they place an object onto your read switch, your uh, your hall sensor, whatever, uh, your button. So boom, door opens, maglock pops. You get the item, uh, and an LED comes on briefly to show that if something has happened, you get the item out of whatever that's popped open uh, that lets them solve puzzle two. So now the show is here, and waiting for input two. Boom, same thing. Another another door opens to get another item. An LED comes on, sound plays, goes back to waiting right here. And finally, uh, waiting for, now you go to input three. Input three has, uh, has triggered your final thing. This door opens. Let's say this is a door to another room. Your L This LED turns off. This LED turns on. This LED turns on. Or whatever this is turns on. And now uh, they stay on. All this stuff stays on uh, here as you go to your success scene. Uh, another sound effect plays just because. <laughs> Technically, your success scene could also... Uh, have just be your reset wait scene if you didn't want a sound effect. The reason we had to add the reset wait is because of the sound effect. Otherwise, that sound effect would just keep playing and playing and playing and playing and playing. So now success gets done playing, goes to reset wait. All this stuff stays on while the room is just looping on itself continuously, waiting for your reset button to be pressed, uh, triggered, whatever, which is input six. And input six goes to reset. It, everything re goes back to you know back to one or zero whatever uh, for three seconds and then jumps back to waiting to your sound effect now your room is reset and ready to go again so uh, that is your very very basic show also if for some reason you need to see what does what you can click the outline button up here and this will show you what happens if input one is triggered jump to door open if input true is triggered jump to uh, Triggered? Well, that's Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Triggered, jump to that. Input three, jump to that. And when this re reaches its end, it will loop. And then it just gives you a breakdown of everything so you can kind of see it at a glance if that uh, helps you at all. So that is the basics of setting up a show like this. Um, again, just think about it like an actual show in a scene. And uh, we will go into a lot more stuff in the next video, the intermediate and of course, then we're going to get into the, the much more crazy advanced where I'm going to show you a show that I have uh, made with a, with a video accompaniment of uh, kind of a breakdown of something we have made that had about 38 scenes in it. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that.